Uh, I'm Elizabeth Waugh, and I'm an aged and decrepit sculptor. <laughs> and my memory goes back rather a long way. This is where I was at uh, art school. My first art school was um, Reigate, and that was in 1944, so that's rather a long time ago. Um, from there, I moved on to Goldsmiths, in the sculpture department, uh, where the, the head of sculpture was George Parker, the man who did the red farthing. And then, happily, I moved on to Gander French, where Henry Moore was one of the patrons, and Graham Sutherland. But it was run as a French atelier, and it was funded by the Arts Council and the French Embassy. And the whole idea was that uh, we had visiting artists, well-known visiting artists, who would come and criticise our work. And amongst those, we had people like Léger, Lessard, Epstein, Moore, Denoides, Gonzac, Adler, Bacon, and they would meet and discuss our work with us, which was absolutely great. We also had a gallery there, a cafe with a gallery, and a lot of French artists used to come and exhibit there. These are where I live now, and to me, these hills are absolutely blew me away because they're so sculptural. You get great, beautiful shapes and folding into them. Um, this, of course, is Frank Dobson. Um, he was also a great influence on my work. And he started off as a painter but became a sculptor. He was one of the top British sculptors in the time of Epstein and uh, Bretzka. But when Henry Moore and the others came along, he was thought of as being you know, not so good. But luckily he's coming back into favour now. Um, this is the dreamer, what my children so kind of call the thumbs up. <laughs> um, she was first exhibited at uh, TV at Water Gardens. And I think she offended somebody's sensibilities because they pushed her into the pond. <laughs> but she was brought out and um, luckily so. Um, this tall seated figure, um, I make them in plaster, which is great because when things don't go right, I take a hammer and chisel to it and just bash bits off. And that leg there was bashed off, I don't know how many times before it was finished. Um, this is another of my great favourites, Marina Marini. Um, he was an amazing man and of all the modern day artists, he actually had a piece of work in the Uffizi Gallery, which I don't think is uh, very common. But he was a, also a graphic artist, and he won a, a first prize in the Viet, um, Venice Biennale. Um, this one is the Embrace, and if you turn her around, the, turn them around the other way, you get the back view of the female, which reminds me of Goldsmiths, when I did an awful thing. Uh, we were meant to measure people and that sort of thing, and I went up and got calipers. <laughs> and very stiff. And I pushed, I pushed, and suddenly they went. And we had an awful job to get the model back on the throne. <laughs> um, swimmers, um, this idea had the feeling of flowing water. But again, with sculpture, you have the difficulty. But it's not like a painting where you can have something painted in the air. It's got to have something to hold it. This piece was done in foundry bronze because... Uh, if done in resin bronze, it would have been too breakable. But unfortunately, foundry bronze is exceedingly expensive, so not many of them get done. Uh, we have a lot of hairs around our way. And I have the joy of seeing them pretty often, so they also inspire me. And people seem to like them. People who are afraid of nudes seem to like animals. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, the animals do. They come in quite handy. Um, otters, we also have otters, although you don't see them very much. Um, the main sighting of them is in the winter when the snow and ice and you can see the, the slides down to the water. But nevertheless, they're there. The swimming otters up there, they spent a long time in a bucket held up because uh, I didn't know how on earth to hold them. Um, we don't get many of these on the <laughs> <laughs> But I saw him on television on the program and I thought the wonderful arrogance and the power of them, it made it really a good sculptural piece. The only thing was with the weight of it you have to have steel struts in the legs to, to hold them up. Again Marina Marini, 
um, his a lot of his work were horses and riders. Starting off, well, his his sort of first ones were very naturalistic, and they became more and more stylized, and eventually quite uh, abstract. Um, my idea, because I like doing nudes and people like animals, I thought, right, I'll combine the two. <laughs> so this one, um, ride a cock horse. First time she was shown in a gallery not far from here, somebody came in and complained and said it was pornographic. So I think it says more about their mind than mine. Um, this piece was done last year for the RGI. And, uh, that is in the same gallery now. I'm just waiting for somebody to come in and say the same thing that I did. But we'll see. Um, acrobatic lurcher. <laughs> I have lurchers, but so far I haven't managed to persuade them to try. <laughs> I'm afraid uh, not very successful. This is my place where all my work takes, takes place. It's a complete tip, but it's my tip. And I know where everything is, even the cat there. <laughs> but um, it's an exceedingly cold place, and in the winter it's, it's like being in a refrigerator. Well, when my studio is absolutely like an icebox, um, I repair to the kitchen table and do linos also influenced by him, and also... <laughs> and also do the occasional painting of the I'll find it. Again. And also occasionally do um, a painting in the dining room where it's warm. But that is the sum of my efforts. <laughs>